Today on Unity Motorsports Garage, we're going to do a video that's going to piss off a lot of cam companies. Stay tuned. So when you buy a camshaft, are you really buying the camshaft or you're trying to buy power and torque? That's really what you're after. You're not after the camshaft. We're going to talk about the untold truth about lobe separation angle and how it affects your engine and how you can get the best bang for the buck. So really what we're talking about today is your average street engine. We're not getting into the all out NA race engine build because that's a separate animal entirely. So pay close attention to this because most RPM range on the street is up to 6,000, maybe 6,500 RPMs, and that's it. One of the things that you need to pay close attention to when you're looking in the cam catalog is the first thing you will notice, you will see, if you're looking at a Chevrolet, it'll have 262 to 400 cubic inches, right? And then it'll have a whole list of cams down below that. So are you telling me that if you pick the bottom of the page cam that it's going to work really well in a 262? No, it's not. So basically what you're after is trying to find a camshaft with the right time at events for your particular engine. And that is the major issue when selecting cams. The thing about it is most people or most cam companies will tell you that Lobe separation angle is a result, and that couldn't be further from the truth. In years of my working with David Vizard, I have learned that it is actually an input, a very important input. Basically, the cam companies do not do the necessary testing to find out what the lobe separation is actually relative to as an input. So that's why they always see it as an output because they never look at it. They're looking at the wrong end of the horse, so to speak. So basically, before I get knee deep into this video, I want to tell you a little story about my experience with lobe separation. It goes back nearly 20 years. Okay, I was big into 4.6 mod motor engines in the early 2000s. The problem was I was having to buy off-the-shelf camshafts that had really wide lobe separation angles. When I'm talking really wide, I'm talking in the 114 to 116 lobe separation angles. Now, I had already done testing on my Plymouth Duster. I went from a 112 to a 108, and it picked up considerable power because it lost nearly three-tenths at the drag strip. So, through deductive reason, and I thought, well, what is good for this? I'm going to try with a mod motor, okay? And I started specking out my own cams, and the first drop I went to was a 112, you know, because I wanted to be conservative. And sure enough, it made more power. Now, this is where DV enters the equation. This was taking place right about the time that I met DV at a little speed shop here local in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we got to talking about this, and so we decided to get three different sets of camshafts, all with the same specs, 236 at 50 thousandths, 242 on the exhaust, one of them grown on a 114, 111, and a 108. So going to the dyno, and I'm getting ready to put a picture in of the results. As you can see from the drop of going from a 114 to a 111, we gained considerable power throughout the RPM range. This wasn't just a top end gain or a bottom end gain. The problem was with that particular short block, I could not put the 108s in it without getting into piston to valve issues. So later on, I went in, put deeper valve reliefs in the pistons, and picked up another 10 horsepower over that 111 cam. So it begs, begs the question, okay, when you tighten up load center, first of all, let's talk about this. What is load separation? For the novice that's getting involved here, load separation is the amount of degrees between the intake lobe 
and the exhaust, exhaust lobe at max lift. And I'll put in an illustration to show you what it actually looks like. Now, when you close up lobe separation angle, you are effectively increasing the overlap triangle. Now, this gets into a little uh, area where most people don't talk about. When you increase overlap, most people tend to think that that makes more top end power, right? Yeah, it does. But if you look at the gains in just my dyno test, you will see that the gains are throughout the RPM range. And what we're after on the street is average power. The peak horsepower number out here at the very top of the RPM range is not going to win you races. It is foot pounds that wins races. All right, for the Chevrolet guys, in the house that's watching this video you know what you're looking at small block head big block head okay let's take a look at the combustion chambers and how that affects your cam choice now if you look in a cam catalog by any of the cam manufacturers out there chances are they're all going to be on the same lobe separation angle why do you think the right lobe separation angle for this particular style head would necessarily work on this style head when it has a rotated chamber and it actually has a little bit more cross flow than a typical wedge head. The answer is it doesn't require the same lobe separation angle. Talking about lobe separation angle on a typical small block Chevy and the first example I'm going to give is a 350 cubic inch engine it normally would like a 108 degree lobe separation angle if you're using a 202 valve, which is pretty typical. But this particular cylinder head here has a 2.2 inch valve, which would widen that lobe separation considerably over the same 202 head. So the valve sizes in relation to the cylinder displacement has ultimate effect on given lobe separation of what's optimal. So now we're moving over to this big block head and this here this particular valve here is not much different in size to that but if this cylinder head is on a given displacement of say a hundred cubic inches more it's going to require a much tighter lobe separation angle at the same compression than this particular head here so you know it begs the question do the cam companies actually dyno test their own cams and find out what's optimal for each engine family? Mm, no. So I talked about valve sizes and how it correlates to lobe separation angle. What about compression? Compression has a huge effect on the lobe separation angle of what's optimal. The higher the compression ratio that you have means that you're going to have to widen the lobe separation angle out to get the ultimate result. The lower the compression means that you're going to want to put a tighter lobe separation angle in for the lower amount of compression. So just some thoughts that you really need to think about that the optimum lobe separation angle is given off of the engine specifications itself. You don't have to take my word for it. I've done lots of dyno testing myself, but there's someone who's done thousands of dyno tests and who can back up his theory. How about it, David? Yeah, and let me add one thing here. When Andy said thousands, he didn't mean <laughs> a, a, a lot of dyno testing. He meant thousands. Thousands, right? Now then, uh, this business of lobe center line angles, it's, you think, after the internal combustion engine has now been around for nearly 150 years, that we'd have a better handle on cam uh, uh, design, uh, cam, yeah, cam valve events, the you know the timing of the opening and closing. Of that. But no, there seems to be no end of people who are great at mathematics and can design lobes that are phenomenal, uh, phen phenomenal dynamically right but it doesn't matter how good the dynamics of a camshaft are 
if it doesn't open and close the valves at an, the appropriate time for the RPM band that the engine is going to operate in, then that cam's no good. Right? It's like Andy said. We're not here to buy camshafts. We're here to buy horsepower. Right? Um, anyone can go and buy a cam. What we've got to take care of here is making sure that all the parts we put together in our engine are complementary. It is very easy. And it fits the combination of the entire vehicle. Yeah, com complementary, yeah. So another thing that I want to touch on is you notice DV sitting here. He has a new channel. Basically, I'm not going to go into all of the details about the old channel, but tell them about your new channel and what we're doing from here forward. Well, the new channel, I, the, well, first let me state the reason, right? Mm -hmm. the, the channel, that, the first channel was one that I had between Marvin, my late partner and good friend. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. Andy knew him pretty well as yeah. well, right? So, uh, you know. But the thing is, when we set that channel up, we made the assumption that since Marvin was almost 30 years younger than me, that I would be the first to pass on. So he needed to have the channel so that he, he could manage it without my having to be there to get it up and running to post stuff, right? So anyway, it didn't work out like that. You know, um, uh, it's, I, that's life, I guess. But the problem was, I'm not very good with passwords. I just cannot ever remember them, especially after my brain surgery, right? And so it, it was always on his shoulders to manage the, the channel. channel, right? He dies and it's like, holy smoke, what am I gonna do now, right? So the, to get the channel back up and running, under my name, we have to go through hell and high water. I mean, court uh, uh, documents and things like this. So I thought, I will revive my old channel. That was the original one I started in a very simple form. I don't know, eight years ago. So I'm rebooting that one. And I'm transferring uh, um, videos from the original one Mm -hmm. to the new one. Now, guys, this leaves me in a, a very difficult position here. I had almost 27,000 subscribers and uh, the channel was making me enough money where I was getting to the point of saying, I'm doing this full time, mm -hmm. right? Now, of course, if I do it full time, that means more dyno testing, more flow testing, more articles, more of everything, everything. right? And it doesn't cost you guys anything to push that subscribe button. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is up here in this upper corner, I'm going to put a link to DV's new channel. So all of his old subscribers and even people that's watching this for the first time, click on that link up there, go give DV a sub, and you're going to get a lot of detailed tech that you are not going to get anywhere else on YouTube, bar none. The thing is with a vehicle is for it to be the best of what you can achieve or want, it has to work like an orchestra. Everything has mm -hmm. to be in tune with that final concept. Now then, what can ruin a good engine build? The number one problem with getting foot pounds out of an engine is people do not put in a cam with the right load separation angle, right? There is a technique, and I'll go into that in one of my videos, whereby you can look at, you can check out, or I can check out the spec of the engine and say, now, assuming you haven't got chronic friction in the engine, it should make this many foot pounds of torque per cubic inch. And that will be based on the compression ratio. Right, uh, so I can look at your compression ratio and say, if you've got that cam right, it will make this foot pounds per cubic inch. If it's wrong, it won't. 
So does it work? That is the question. That is the question. Because let me yeah. tell you, in using DV's methods, I used it in the 4.6, and we were running Performance Street in the same class yeah. and wound up winning the championship in 2013. Pretty much won every race at that uh, of the season using what I learned from DV. And moving forward with the current engine builds, it's in Casper. Well, look at Mixed Up Boss. We used an off-the-shelf grind that was close to what his program suggested, and we come up, what, three foot-pounds short? Yeah, we. I, I said you should be able to get between <laughs> 700 and 710 horsepower, and you should be able to hit 600 foot-pounds. Well, we made 708 horsepower, and... 597 foot-pounds. So we were three foot-pounds off. you got something out of this video on lobe separation angle and when people tell you that it's a result and not an input you know that they don't know what they're talking about yes. so announced and and everyone that says that has done a fraction of the cam testing I've done <laughs> has not thought it through properly and has no evidence to back up their claim Plus, their first input that when they're going to spec out a cam is a guess. My cams are specced out totally guess-free. They it's are based off from of the physics of the engine the itself. The physics of the engine itself. It's like, yes. I don't have to guess what gravity is. It's been measured and checked out, and it's down 1G. The measurement of 1G is down to a fine art, right? My lobe center line angle is down to a fine art and it's not guessed it is computed so until next time this is andy from unity motorsports garage and this is david vizard we will catch you later say catch you later yeah we'll catch you later